live. If you do not want your likeness on either of those, you will have to turn off your camera. <laughs> I'm turning oh. mine off. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I, I'm going to pre-apologize right now. So my dog is very calmly napping at the moment. As soon as there's any squirrel activity, he is very loud and super protective. So if we randomly get barks, I'm going to have to mute myself. So there's remind me about that. I'm setting this thing up for right now, but it'll be just a second, and I'm going to teach you something very important we've been teaching. Okay? Hold on. Okay. Yeah, I just usually keep myself... <laughs> <laughs> Warren, I see you're in Seattle. Where are you at? I'm in West Seattle. Oh, yeah, where they just announced the nice shutdown of the bridge for the next, they say three years, but we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a bridge. I mean, really, like, come on. I mean, if 520 went down, wouldn't they just tell you, oh, we're going to get to that in four years? Yeah. And then if, eight years later, maybe. Maybe. But you know what happened in Minnesota? What? Th that, um, what? There was a bridge that went over, was it 45 or 35? Anyway, one of the major interstates up there over a river, and it was built back up within a year. See, I, mm, Seattle yeah, I don't, yeah. Yeah. boggles my mind. Yeah. If we had so, other ways to get out of West Seattle, it wouldn't be a problem, but there's only one way out, and that's going to cause major problems when we're all back at work, so. Yeah. That's true. So Lauren, are you with Seattle Parks? I'm with Tableau. Oh, okay. Oh, I see that now in your in your tag. Gotcha. Isn't that cool? That's why we did it, right? Yeah. Everyone say hi to Minura. Hi, Minura. Hello. Hi, everybody. Nice um, to be here. Lauren, you're going to luck out, right? My Facebook Live is not working, so we are not going to go to <laughs> Facebook Live, but we are recorded, and we're going to get going here. Uh, with our amazing class so we can stay on time and I can get you to lunch. Uh, here we go. So let's see. My name is John Chen. I am the CEO of GeoTeaming and you are here at Virtual Team Building. Excellent. Thank you very much. So uh, you are here because you are trying to, or you're having challenges maybe working with your virtual team, or maybe you're new from working from home, but let's just find out a little bit more. You know, in this next 60 minutes, it's my hope that I help you and your team work at a high level and create amazing results. So in virtual team building, you said, why are you here? Well, the kind of nice part is that you're here for either virtual or online team building. Uh, as I built this word cloud for here, but there's also a few other thanks or marketing moment increase. There's a lot of other interesting words that are here for this. And these are all the many reasons why you are here. Now I'm going to do this. Uh, I am going to just do a little bit of instruction here at the beginning. I, I'm going to talk about <coughs> why this type of team building works. This is known as experiential virtual team building or the fancy name for uh, learn by doing. So uh, this is a uh, research done by my, uh, my mentor, Dr. Simon Priest. He's actually has over 25 books in the field. And I felt like he did the best research in the field to show why this amazing type of team building work produces actual measurable results. So during this time, I'm going to tell you why it works. I'm going to tell you why it works better than the classroom. And number three, I'm going to tell you why self-facilitating teams produce the greatest ROI. I'll explain that in just a second. All right. We're on to our first chart here, and in the first chart, the key here is that uh, this is a team development index. And this team development index is an assessment that everyone on a team takes, aggregates each team into a score when the number goes up. Excuse me, uh, your team is performing better. Um, in other words, they're communicating more, they have more trust, they're doing problem solving. And so now what they've actually measured with this is as the, your team development goes up, oh, hold, behold miracles, right? Your team, uh, your team performance, uh, the time it takes a team to do a complex task goes down. In this case, it took uh, 45 minutes for this task, uh, for this team to complete this task at the beginning of this professionally designed team building program. They were able to reduce that by 40% of the time. Now, think to yourself, what would you do if your team had 40% more time? And that's the value of what this type of team building can be. The next slide I have is shows that it's better than the classroom, right? X is the control group. They did nothing. They got nothing, right? This circle group, this white circle group, right, is the classroom. This is if I just talked to you for 60 minutes, right, about team building. And haven't you ever heard a great speaker? 
they're amazing. You get all jacked up, right? And, and you're like, I'm going to do everything. And then, then you take the binder or the workbook that they gave you and you put it on the shelf and next week you did nothing. If you have ever done that, raise your hand. Yeah, yeah, Vicky has, Lauren has, Megan has, and Debbie has. Okay, great. Good. Looks, you all have something in common. Um, the next part here is experiential. So this is the learn by doing piece of the program, right? Uh, they actually, their team development index went down before the program. This is called pre-event anxiety. Uh, all of you have probably event, uh, experienced some anxiety in the last few weeks. But let me just tell you, after a professionally designed program, this, this group was able to make a 77% boost in their team development score right? And just think about that. The last group did 40. This group did 77. Imagine how much more time and how much more productive and how fun it is to work on this team. Okay, so this type of training works better than the classroom. The last piece I have for you is self-facilitating teams produce the greatest ROI. So what does that mean anyways, right? Okay, for number one, self-facilitating teams is that these are teams that allocate some amount of time at the end of doing a complex task to ask themselves some pretty easy questions. It's, uh, I like to give the, uh, the model of uh, WWW, which stands for what, so what, and now what. What stands for what happened in our last team thing that we did, right? So what is, so what does that mean to us? Or so what did we learn about each other and about us working as a team? And finally, it's now what, like now what are we going to do different? Teams don't get better without change. And so if you ask these three simple questions and even implement something, just even one thing better at the next part, you can produce this, right? The greatest ROI. This team here, the white squares, they did nothing, they got nothing. These three teams took a professionally uh, designed team building event. Now, all of them lost some of it after two weeks here, but now here's where the real change is. With black squares, they did nothing. And they went back to nothing. They went back to the stable that the, where a normal group is at. And so I love to say this, teams are like software. If you do not upgrade them constantly, they will go back to the level of performance that they were at. And that's what happens here. Now, all of us pretty much know that if we go back and review the material from our program, we're more likely to be more effective. So in this case, the white uh, dots here, uh, this says I did some follow-up or the team got together and like every four, three to four weeks, we got together and reviewed and maybe remembered the principal or did something else. Um, and this team retained 80% of its goals. But this team here, the black dots, they were taught self-facilitation and they practice it. So at every team meeting or every team project, they just ask what to do better, right? And this team not only meets, but it can exceed the gains from a professionally designed team building event because they keep getting better. I have this great friend and he said, right, don't do uh, one thing 100% better, do 100 things 1% better. And basically you build an exponential curve that is better than the less of the exponential curves that we've been having to watch over the last couple of weeks. Okay, self-assailing teams produce the greatest OI. So that led me to this. I saw the challenge as early as March 6, and I brought a team together, and we've created this solution, right? Uh, my solution for your virtual team building is pretty much how I felt when the whole coronavirus thing went down. I have lost 12 programs to date for team building because they were face-to-face. -face. Remember when we could get together and touch each other? Uh, well, that's a long time ago. So the, my solution is uh, this an acronym. The an acronym is GUR. Uh, even if your mic is muted, just say GUR with me. Grr. I love the cookie. Did you see that cookie just come in? Grr. I'm hungry. Grr. Okay. So GUR stands for these things. So G stands for goals. So in this case, uh, goals uh, are or your pre-corona goals for your team are probably very different than your post-corona goals. And so the other part too is even if you think you have aligned your team to the goal, you probably experience now that virtual teams sometimes approach the goals in totally different ways. We could be saying the same thing, but we might not be able to be uh, doing it well. So the key for perf uh, high performing teams is to agree on the goal. Did you know this fact? Only 5.9% of companies communicate their goals daily. You want to get the value out of this call? Look, we're on minute number eight. I'll give you the biggest value from this call. Do this one thing. Write one email a day if you are the manager of a team. And just write the goals for this week or today are X. You might add on, right? Here's the progress, right? Jane did this. Joe, you know, Joe did that. And then finally, celebrate. 
the goals you actually achieved. The fact that you can achieve something in this environment, right, is amazing. And so <laughs> celebrate that because then if you celebrate it, you're going to get more. You know, one of the other challenging pieces is this. This is my little bit of humor of the day. Hello, 501 Works. You're going to get this. How many have had you had this in Zoom, right? You got somebody's removing their kid, right? Somebody's got their pet. Debbie's got a dog, right? So this is, this is what you battle every time you get on a Zoom call, right? It's like, it's so easy. I could just do this and I could look at my email, right? Meetings over here. And I'm like, ticket, 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 I'm, not, you know, I'm texting, I'm Facebook messaging. It's so easy. You have so many distractions. And so doing this, keeping your team engaged during this Zoom meeting is one of the key secrets. Okay, the next R stands for rules, right? We all knew the rules for face-to-face -face and how to engage and have a sidebar conversation. The problem is the rules are totally different here online, right? So, so if Vicky and Manura have a sidebar conversation, you talk as loud as I am. Right, and everybody else hears it, right? And so you can't do that, not not and not be effective. So you, you need to learn some new rules for what I call Corona Land. Okay, here we go. Thirty-nine percent of surveyed employees believe that people in their own organization don't collaborate enough, and I believe it's because they have not established a new set of rules, right? And so you know the the sidebar for this though is that this is one of the greatest times of collaboration ever. If you are a master of of dealing with disruption, you're finding that people who never had the time to collaborate are suddenly available. So you should check that out. And and if you see that in your organization, take that opportunity. The next R is rhythm. Teams who succeed online have a rhythm. As you can see from this example, this is a, a high-end Japanese drill team. And look, when they have rhythm, boom, it's beautiful, right? You see them, they're doing this complex stuff and they're not um, hitting each other, they're not running into each other, not stepping on each other's feet. When you don't have rhythm, if your team is reworking, redoing, mistaking, missing stuff, they do not have rhythm. 97% of employees and executives believe that a lack of alignment, which I call rhythm, is within a team impacts the outcome or a task of a project. And I'm going to give you an example of it, right? This is cool statistics, right? McKinsey did the homework, but I'm going to give you an experience of it. And, and I hope you find it for yourself. Last but not least is results. I love cars. Okay. I own a Porsche Boxster. Uh, I love watching F1 on, on Netflix. And look what happens when you get a group of people, over 20 people, they have the same goal. They know the rules of engagement and they have this incredible rhythm. You can do this. You can service an entire car, change four tires, gas up the entire car, service many other items, make adjustments in two seconds or less. That's what I want for your team. Whatever this looks like for you, whatever your pit stop is, whatever your two seconds is, I want your team to be able to do this online so that you can come share some stories of success with me uh, I'll, stare, I'll share some stories that of, of success of teams here in Seattle. So this is what you're looking for. You're looking for results. And in this case, um, the results are being a productive team. Uh, I believe the goal for today is for, to teach you how to host a productive team meeting and establish the best team practices online. Uh, you might have other goals and you can share them in just a minute because I'm about to teach you my first team building uh, initiative and it's called Go Ahead Caller. Could you imagine that I had a dream to be a radio DJ? I mean, listen to this voice. What do you think? Yeah, so, yeah, but thank you, Vicky. And so, you know, Vicky uh, called in on my radio show. She goes, hey, this is Vicky Allgood from Seattle. And I would go, go ahead, Vicky. All right, that's what we're doing. We're establishing some new rules. This is for uh, Corona Land. We're gonna have some rules. Today's rules are, if you have your video camera, please turn it on, if at all possible. I. I I'll give you forgiveness if you didn't do your hair, if you're not camera ready. You'll see it'll be a big advantage for us as a team. Uh, if you don't, if you can't, that's okay. We'll just figure it out. But if you're visual, raise your hand. Just everyone practice raising your hand. Yep, yes, Gabby Ann, Vicky, Megan, Lauren, Manura. Come on, keep your hand up. There you go, I see it. Okay, great. And Majula, uh, Manjula, if you are not visual, you can either chat, uh, you can find the raise hand button, or you can unmute your mic and say your name. So that's how I'm gonna- Hello. Ignore. I'm Hello. Manjula. Hey, Man Manjula, where are you calling in from? I'm from Redmond. Oh my gosh, that's a foreign land. Okay, so yeah. we'll get it to 
<laughs> so uh, if you want to just uh, unmute and say your name when we do that. So if multiple people come in at the same time, uh, I'll acknowledge all of you and establish some kind of order. Uh, and if I miss you, just say, raise your hand again. So we're going to get a chance to introduce each other. And so I'll just give you the example. If I raise my hand, I would go, uh, go ahead, John Chen. And I would say, my name is John. Uh, I want your location. I'm calling from Seattle, Washington. And then I'd like you to tell me about one of your team challenges, like an example. So an example is, oh my gosh, Debbie Ann, I had this team. We tried to do something really simple. It should have taken a minute and took 10 and a half freaking minutes. I'm here so it doesn't happen. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to bring everyone back here. Thank you very much. And uh, now who would like to go next? Who would like to introduce themselves? Just raise your hand. There we go. Let's go to Megan and then Debbie Ann. Sure. So my name is Megan. I'm with Seattle Parks and Rec. And I will say one of the struggles that I've been having is normally we are able to make time for in-person team meetings with the majority of our team. And with everything that is going on COVID related, that is not possible. Um, we end up having to have like three team meetings a week, but it's never the whole team because we're all on such odd schedules because of mission essential functions. So I've got some staff working overnight shifts. I've got some staff working nine to five shifts. I've got some staff working odd swing split shifts. Um, and that has been for a team that usually bonds really well together, making our communication choppy. Excellent, thank you so much, Megan. Uh, I would suggest if you can overlap an hour or two and put your team meeting, that would be a big value. And for those who can't, recording your meetings and having giving the link to your team uh, is another way that we have done it in the past successfully. Thank you so much, Megan. Uh, let's go to Debbie Ann. Hello, everybody. I'm Debbie Ann. I'm from Queens, New York. And I work with an organization called Educated Choices Programs. I go into schools and I talk to them about the environment and um, healthy diets and we're not able to go into schools right now and because the program is um, licensed we're not allowed to do it online so I'm trying to get some knowledge so that I can bring it back to the higher ups and show them that we can facilitate so that's why I'm here. And Debbie Ann's role today is she's a graduate of the class and she is actually helping being the producer. She's doing some behind the scenes things and she's learning how to be me. Yay. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Debbie Ann. Who'd like to go next? Let's go to Vicki and then right. 501 works. I'm Vicki Allgood. I am um, with Seattle Parks and Rec as well with Megan. Um, and I think one of my struggles right now is um, the whole virtual thing and uh, Wi-Fi connection and um, not everybody is buying off on it and uh, just makes for a struggle all the way around. Um, some people are on FMLA and some people are just not answering their phones, not texting and uh, makes for a, a challenge when you want to... Uh, get a team meeting together. Perfect. Hey, Vicki, uh, the mm -hmm. other challenge too is actually hearing you. So where's your mic? Is it on the computer or is it on your headset? <laughs> Does it have a flip down or is it built it's in? Right there. Yeah, it's right there. Oh my gosh, it's so much better. <laughs> here, here, let me just show you the difference. Ready? Hi, my name is Vicki. Hi, my name is Vicki. Okay, great. So that's the difference, right? And I have my friend Catherine all the time. So here's, here's actually the sign that you'll get. Oh, let me see if I can find it. Oh, yeah. This, there's this one, right? <laughs> yeah. This is what happens because you know what? Right. And then so, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, we built, my friend actually taught me to build signs for some of this stuff. Anyways, Vicky, the, the challenge is right. Some of this stuff is new and just something as simple as that, like moving your head from, from here to here changes the meeting experience for us, right? It makes it so much easier. Leo Maneras, he's like, yes, it makes it so much easier. So, um, yeah. So I do apologize for that. And I also oh noticed that I was, um, yeah, so it, now I'm probably like too loud. But uh, I also realized that I did not uh, mute my mic, so I will do that. 
you're good here as long as you're not noisy. Uh, but it's so great. Okay, let's go to 501 Works, and then we're going to go to Manjula, who has technically raised her hand. Thank you so much. So let's go to 501 Works. What's your name? Hi, I'm Kim. We use a joint account. The cookie, as you called it, is the owner of the account, but it's actually a Play-Doh version of the actual person. But anyway, I'm using his account today. We just we share that one. Um, we're a small IT firm located in Northern Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C. Um, if anything, we're probably, what I'm looking for is Zoom fatigue. Um, we have clients, we're all on Zoom. Uh, and then, you know, if I was trying to, I could say that across the boards, like how do you make it a little more interesting um, for them because we're all on Zoom too much. Like this is my fourth Zoom meeting today. So that's why I'm late and I'm like, what? My hair looks like this, whatever. But so uh, some Zoom fatigue. And the second thing is we have staff, we have, when you talk about team building, we have a staff of seven to nine people that get on uh, from four to four thirty on Tuesdays and Thursdays because that's a time clients don't necessarily want but everybody's kind of like Bleh, and I can't and and you know we're starting to they're starting to show their pictures now that we're using zoom and we pull our cats up into the picture because we're all working at home but or our dogs but um, I don't know just something that is it because people are like now what do you want to talk about Kim you run this I'm like no I want us to run the group meeting so what's that is that a stuffed owl uh, this actually came back to me. Uh, my mom passed away three years ago. I know it's okay. Thank Aww. you so much. And um, this is my childhood uh, stuffed animal known as Finky. Right. And so I just keep him around. When kids get on the call and Finky comes in, right, it's like, doo -doo -doo -doo. the kids are like, oh my God, look at that figure. And it's almost as cute as baby Yoda. Right. And so I just keep these kind of things around. Yeah, Kim, you're on to the right track, right? And, uh, but you know, that we used to have this joke at Microsoft, right? Uh, I used to work at Microsoft for a decade. And the joke was uh, somebody comes in, right? And goes, hey, I just worked 12 hours. And you know what the other person says? Oh, you're working half days. <laughs> yeah, Kim, Zoom, Zoom fatigue is real. Uh, I had some nightmare thing like uh, last night, actually, uh, because I produced some of these shows. So like, you, you, want to, you want stress, you want anxiety, uh, try and run a Zoom meeting for 82 people, right? For a high-end keynote speaker. And I got Zoom bomb for the first time yesterday. <laughs> it, it was funny, but not funny. This person came in, uh, dropped audio, and dropped video of a 9-11 uh, terror, uh, the buildings in New York City, which Debian is unfortunately too, too familiar with. And I kicked that person out in under two seconds because I'm a great producer. But it's real. It's a real thing. So thank you, Kim. And I hope to um, absolve that. Somebody actually came to my class and said, I actually have more energy after 60 minutes of Zoom rather than less energy. So look for that. Look for that. If that works for you, uh, figure out what I did and do it again. Who would like to go? Oh, I see. Uh, I said I'd go to Manjula. Thank you, Manjula. Go ahead. Hello. Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah. Where'd you go? Hold on. I'm here. Um, oh, well, I you turned on your video. Still. Holy cow. Yeah, perfect. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> I quickly ran and did something to my hair. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm from Redmond, Washington, and I'm actually part of the King County Library System. Yes. Uh, one of my major problems is how to sustain the enthusiasm of the team. The first two weeks, it was still good. I was able to do a lot of, you know, I created a whole bunch of trainings for the team because the team that I um, have, they primarily work in the library. So for them, there's not much to do from working from home. So I tried my best to create this entire list, but now it's now week five. So, and it looks like it might continue for more time. So how and what can I do more to sustain this continuing lockdown and at the same time, the whole enthusiasm? Yeah, thank you, uh, Manjula. And again, the libraries have been, you have, have no idea. I have met libraries from around the world from the article Jennifer Clifton posted on libraryjournal.com. And Manjula, I can tell you the best idea, I think came from uh, South Carolina. You know, they're having a drop-in happy hours. They'll run Zoom like this, advertise it, and that people can just drop in at any point and they will help them find virtual books, virtual movies, resources. You guys' as library have a lot of digital stuff, right, that can really help. So instead of being able to put books back and forth, I mean, in the end, those library workers, they feel the best when they know they have purpose and when they're helping someone. 
And so hopefully we'll give you more ideas around that. Um, yeah, the morale, what I've talked about too, is that, uh, you know, the adrenaline hits, right? The adrenaline hit from like the, the mass chaos and the, all the change, it wears off at some point, right? The adrenaline's there to really help you. You can like do some superpower stuff, but you can't sustain that for two, four, five, six weeks. You got to get into some new normal. I hate that word, but you got to do something, anything. You got to, you got to help your, you got to help your team establish their, their new purpose and their new role. And that will help you avert that morale burnout, right? Um, because the morale burnouts there was when the team's not performing. So thanks for, thanks for being here. And you're not alone. Lots and lots of libraries. Uh, let's see. Who wants to go next? Let's go to Lauren. I'm Lauren. I uh, manage a team at Tableau. Um, so we're selling software. And my team is all brand new college grads. Um, this is their first job out of school. And I hired them all in January. So most of them only had about a month in the office to build that team camaraderie before we went to working from home. So keeping, same as Manjula, keeping the team morale up and engagement level is high. Perfect, Lauren. Hey, Lauren, do you know, um, do you know uh, Wansley, Michael Wansley? No. You ever heard the song, I'm going to pop some tags? You know that song? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that guy works at Tableau. Oh. So he sings the riff with Macklemore. His name is Michael Wansley. He's one of my good friends. And uh, I love Tableau. I've done team building. Remember when we were face to face? We used to touch each other. I did that for Tableau at least a couple of times. Um, so, yeah, thank you for that. What a challenge, too, right? I don't think that was in your plan to hire yeah. a bunch of people and then have a pandemic. Exactly. Especially newer. So, and I'm assuming you're working with younger ish people. Yes, they're all fresh out of college first jobs. You know, the one advantage though, I believe most of the people, I just worked with a high school team that is an entrepreneur and I got the, the pleasure and the honor of coaching them. They're kind of used to this online environment. Yeah. They they're can, really resilient and used to it. It's just keeping them engaged and building that team. Yes. Because we can't do it in person. Yeah. Same thing. They always want to do it, but they, they can probably do it better. They're probably going to end up teaching you something is my guess along this process. Um, and that's what I saw from the kids. I mean, here's an example. I, I did a program for DECA. You know what DECA is? It's like the high school program. It has business plan competitions and kids really learn a lot from it. And you have 1800 DECA kids, right? And they have 10 o'clock curfew. What do they do? Do they go to bed? No, they get on like Skype and they start chatting to everybody at least between 10 and midnight until they make them go to bed. The kids want to connect. And I'm, I'm saying kids facetiously. These are not kids. These are young adults. They're, they're basically adults by the time they come to you. But I'm saying what I do know about that, that generation. I have a friend who's a generation trainer. Um, they, they love the being online. They're comfortable here. And now you're right. You just got to find the one thing to engage them if it's not, not more than that. Uh, let's see. Who else would like to go? Let's go to Manura. So I'm coming from a different angle. So um, my name is Munira. I'm uh, with Premier Financial Alliance. I actually um, am an insurance agent that specializes in living benefits. I'm coming from the other side. I have a manager who in this time of pandemic as it is, our business is going crazy, but she has these massive, sometimes three, four hour Zoom calls that by the end of the first hour, hour and a half, my brain is pulp already. And, you know, she's trying to, set these systems in place that, you know, we can maximize, but she sometimes doesn't realize that we're not, we're human beings and we cannot function on the same topic for four hours. So how do we sort of go across, you know, how can I, as part of her team, explain to her that this is not productive? It's so hard. It's your manager, right? Yeah. <laughs> It, I'll, I'm going to quote my very good away my, from the, the money making activities that we can actually go and help people in this time of need. But instead of doing that, we're sitting there setting systems in place, which is not really what we want to do. We want to maximize in this time. Yeah, Morning hours two, between 10 and two. Oh yeah. I'm going to give you two pieces. The average amount of time that a salesperson professionally sells is less than 25%. Right. Most of it is spent on, 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 on academic or whatever, like a, like accounting type of crap. And, oh, I did say that. Sorry. And my housemate, I'm going to give you my house based quote. My housemate is, um, he's now director of communications. He's done, he's a journalist by heart. And, and he said, Oh, I'm more than happy to always tell you that your baby is ugly. Do you know what I mean? 
<laughs> he says a thing like, it's so hard to tell your boss, right? That your meeting's baby is ugly. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, so, so we'll find a way. So let's do that. And so uh, let's go on. Thank you. I think we've got a chance to meet everybody. Debbie Ann, did I miss anybody? I don't believe we did. You're on mute. <laughs> okay, she says no. Perfect. Okay, great. So let's continue on. You saw now the first example here, Chaz. We now get a chance to talk. We're communicating effectively because we got a chance to hear from everybody. Everybody actually is filled as included. I see low. Everyone is looking at the screen. So for the most part, I believe you're, you're engaged. And so let's go on to the next thing. Uh, the next way to keep people engaged, especially Minora, like when you have this four hour type of thing, right? Uh, sometimes that's necessary. And if it is, do this, right? I'm going to establish something. The next team th building thing I'm going to tell you is called the back channel chat. Find your chat window, which is click the chat button, find where the chat is, and show the people where the chat window is. So let's see, Debbie, Ta Debbie Ann for the first time is going to chat my LinkedIn profile, right? And so I highly encourage you, you know, a lot of times when we meet, we might want to network or learn from about each other, right? If you'd like to do that, you can either chat your LinkedIn profile or your company name. And if, if you're shy, you can just chat a, a anything like a, a nice quote or saying, I just want to make sure that your chat window is working. Now, here's the reason why. Debbie Ann is going to uh, watch for Debbie Ann's chat, but I'll, each of you start chatting. And I, again, I'm going to do this. In your meetings early on, show people the chat window. Why? Because I'll tell you, even if people don't tell me, I literally was in a meeting with, uh, it's all the top 40 entrepreneurs under the age of 40 who won the awards over the years. And um, <laughs> you're on mute sign, got to do that before the next meeting. Thanks, Kim. Um, anyways, I was on this meeting and uh, it was a blah fest. It was like, it, it, we, had the, we had the CEO for a high end company that really succeeded. They're doing this amazing work but they, this is the first time they're meeting and, and all they did was three people blood. So what did I do? I lit up the chat room, right? And then I stayed engaged. Otherwise I would have been like doing email. I had stuff to do, like I'm managing these classes, I'm writing a book. Anyway, so I was doing that and so I lit up the chat room, right? And, and it's not even my meeting, but I end up meeting the best people. I, six people, other people put in their LinkedIn profiles. I immediately, uh, liked all of them because I know this group is already high powered. They're like awesome people. And then uh, one of them actually asked for a meeting with me and he goes, oh, I'm so interested in your work, right? Hey, let's meet. And I was like, meeting value done. And I only stayed 30 of the 60 minutes because I had to come to one of these classes. So anyways, uh, light up the chat room, right? Even if they don't ask you, but if you're the leader, tell them about it. Encourage them to use it when others are speaking. So like while I'm talking, you two can, you can all have a sidebar conversation and it won't bug me. In fact, I like it when this chat bar just totally lights up because I know that my people are engaged. The chat box helps extroverts get ideas without interrupting me, the speaker, right? But for you who are introverts, you're getting assaulted with information right and 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 audio and video and and slides right but i do a lot of team building quite often it's the introverts who find the answer and introverts when you finally get the answer put it in the chat room you can change the whole meeting right and that's how you do it and it and it, it keeps you engaged because you're processing all the information and then you're just trying to you know find what the aha idea is so that's the back channel chat so let's see debbie Ann, has everyone chatted yet no well so who are we missing uh manjula i do not see you yet kim griever i see you thank you lauren i don't see your chat yet you could be chatting personally to somebody, so just put anything in the chat room. Oh, there you go. Hello. Thank you very much. Megan is good. Vicky is the best student I've ever had. Manura <laughs> and Manjula. Okay, we had we did a 35 team meeting. It was crazy. Oh yeah, you gotta you gotta wait till you see bigger ones. Okay, everybody's chatted. Thank you so much, Debbie Ann. Now I'm gonna give you your first team challenge. Okay, here we go. Your next challenge is that you're going to chat A to Z one letter at a time. So Vicky, who's my top A student, you can't cheat and go A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, and try and hit return, okay? One letter at a time. You cannot chat twice in a row. So if Vicky chats, Vicky can't chat again, right? Menorah has to go. Kim has to go. Lauren has to go. 
you got to restart if you missed a letter. So if you say A, B, D, or you say A, B, C, C, right, you got to restart. So now Vicky, of course, has already uh, chatted A. So now you can't talk, uh, just so you know. You can't talk when you're chatting A to Z. But if you miss a letter or repeat a letter, you can chat, uh, you can talk until um, somebody chats A again to start. So normally I would ask if anybody has any questions, but because you guys are so type A, you are already chatting. I'm just gonna let you know that Vicky has A, Kim has, uh, or Lauren did B, Kim did C, Manura D, Megan E, Manjula F, Kim G, F G, and Manura H, Lauren I. Okay, great, we're to I now. Vicky J, Kim J, Kim K, Kim J K. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, Kim K. I got a literary, a literary Manu, Ma, Manjula, J K L, Manura M, Kim N, Lauren O, Megan P, Manjula Q. Manjula and Manura Q, two Qs. You must start over. Manjula A. Oh, where are we at? Manjula A, Kim B, Manu, Manura C. Oh, wait, 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 Kim E. <laughs> what kind of alphabet is that? You guys are yeah, still going. Megan D, the Vicky. Greek alphabet. <laughs> I'm sorry, Vicky, what did you say? I said it's the Greek alphabet. I think they're backwards. <laughs> Alpha, beta. <laughs> I was just on a call with teachers too, and she's a Latin expert. Don't get me wrong. Oh, Vicky already said A, Manjula B, Manera C, Megan D. Uh, oh, what happened? Vicky, come on. E F G H I. Why don't you just do elemental while you're at it? She's just trying to move it along. She's type A like the rest of us, so. Right? Know your styles, right? Aren't you? Some of you, like, I bet Manura, right? 30 minutes into your boss's meeting, you're like, can we, are we done? Can we get over this? Right? Yeah, yeah. Speed it up, people. Let's move. Megan is not surprised at all, but I did that. Yeah, Megan knows you, right? A little bit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's so what we call Vicky in, in term be, team, team building, pushing a rope. Do you know what I mean? Pushing a rope? I thought it was a button. <laughs> Megan's laughing. <laughs> Megan's laughing. I have no comments. <laughs> I was her supervisor for a half a second. So. Oh, half a second. <laughs> All right. It was a very interesting half a second. Smack dab <laughs> in the middle of summer. <laughs> With 2,700 kids. 100? No um yeah pretty close oh, yeah. that's yeah i think we almost hit 2700 that summer it was rather busy it's kind of like a how, how about a how about a, a 353 million pandemic go in the middle of <laughs> just just do it for that i was happy that it was in march rather than summer yeah agreed Vicky, you have to start over. You can only do one letter. Do you want me to show you the rules again or not? Vicky says A.
<laughs> it's Friday. Hey, everybody, we made it to Friday. Celebrate. We made it to Friday. Yes. No, Look at Lauren. Lauren is not having any it's of it. Flamingo shirt like, day. She, yeah. Lauren is like, forget your Friday. We want to finish this. She's a data person, I know. You work at Tableau. <laughs> Vicky said one. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky. Ah. Uh, okay, 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 okay. You know who the rebel is here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that these, could be me. These are not the letters you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you the rules again. <laughs> oh my god, I'm having the best day ever. Okay, okay, look at it. I'm gonna remind you about this, right? You couldn't talk through A to Z, but if you missed a letter or you chat like like if you're Vicky. You could just talk all you want because you're not you're not doing it right. It's fine. A to Z, one letter at a time. Can't chat twice. Must restart. Right. You can't talk during A to Z, but in between you can. Does anybody have any questions about the rules? Okay. Manjula says A. Uh, Vicky said B, Manura says C. <laughs> Vicky said D. <laughs> Manjula said E. Manura said F. We're still going. Lauren said G. I bet some of you can already predict what's going to happen. Megan said H. Vicky said I. Manura said J. Lauren said K. Manjula L, Megan M, Vicky N, Manura O, <laughs> Vicky P, Manjula Q, Lauren R, Vicky S. Kim T, oh, oh two U's, Manura Megan U's. Let's do this, unmute your mics and tell me what just happened. Oh. We were trying to be nice and waiting for somebody else to do it. I was trying to be ready and had my letter typed before the next one. Yep, that is what I did as well. <laughs> like I'd go forward to have it ready and hit enter before anybody else could. Obviously that failed. <laughs> can, can Megan, anybody, good. Megan can, we've talked about things like this. We have, yes. Can, can, <laughs> wait, hold on a second. Hold on. Get to is, but we haven't done it. Is if we watch the order, if I started, then Debbie went, and then Megan. If we could figure out the order, then we know who is supposed to go next. Otherwise, we're going to keep screwing it up until we figure out some kind of a system. Even Lauren was, did suggest that multiple times. I feel. I feel like those guys in white. Oh, in the chat, <laughs> which I didn't hear her say that. <laughs> no, it was in the chat. I, I, she said it multiple times. <laughs> can, can anybody guess Lauren's style? Oh, I, yeah, I missed her message there. So I thought she was being facetious after people were blowing it. And she just put over, I was reading that correctly because I was back is, to looking at the A again. Is Lauren an introvert or an extrovert? Just, just watch. I would say an, an introvert. introvert. Self-admitted self introvert. What did I tell you? The introverts are consuming all the information and boom, they have the answer. Okay, so what are you guys gonna do? You want Does to that make continue? introverts make better managers? <laughs> <laughs> Not my alphabets. Why, why don't we use Lauren's suggestion? So alphabetical order. Okay, would you mind posting that right now so that we can I'll see that again rather than scrolling up because, well, I freely admit I don't feel like scrolling up all the way. <laughs> it's that Megan, that was so, can you resend me that email? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, that, that, that's, that's up there with people are like, I can't find it. I know you sent it to me a week ago. Could you resend it? Don't be talking about me like that. Oh, oh <laughs> no. If it were, if it were just you, I'm talking about like, some pertinent documents. Ugh. All right. So since I'm starting. Oh, whoops. I, I put my name in the wrong order, but. I was going to say that. That doesn't look alphabetical. Oh. No. 
So we're going with this this one? Let's go with this order. Okay. That sounds Which good. One? All right. So, all right. Here we go. And okay. Kim has said A. Uh, Manjula B, Megan C, Manura D, Lauren E, Vicky F, Kim G, Manjula H, Megan I, Manura J, La Lauren K, Vicky L, Kim M, Manjula N, Megan O, Manura P, Lauren Q, Vicky R, Kim S, Manjula T, Megan U, Manura V, Lauren W, Vicky X, Kim Y, Manjula Z, and the crowd goes wild. Yeah. Oh. Cool. Now unmute your mics, and and now this. I told you self-facilitating teams, all they do is ask three questions. So I'm going to just ask three questions, right? Number one, what happened for you? What was your personal experience or what did you observe of the group? Go ahead. Anybody? I love it. This Friday, I get to, I get to do this, Vicki. Bueller, anyone? <laughs> Bueller? I think for me, I just waited for Kim moment Kim timed, I knew it was my turn to go. Perfect, right? You took all this information and figured out the one thing to focus on, and it allowed you to perform as a team, right? Excellent, yeah. great. Who, um, who else? Anybody else? What happened? I pretty much waited for Lauren, and I tried very hard not to uh, jump before <laughs> her. But you wanted to. Look at your style, Vicky. That's why I like you so much. You're the rebel. You are the rebel. I love that. Okay, so this DMs, so I just yeah, know. I was just waiting for Vicky. So you're right. I wasn't worrying to jump ahead of anybody. I was like, okay, I know my place is after. Yeah, I had a I had a role to do. I just didn't want to screw up the the letter of the alphabet. So yeah. what did this mean to you? What did you learn? So what did you learn? Cooperation. Cooperation said Vicky. Anyone else? Lauren shaking her head. Yes. Mendula. Attention. Uh, I I heard Manura say attention. Manjula, do you have a comment? Yeah, I think focus and the end goal. We, I wanted to see without a mistake. Perfect. Well, until we figured it out, I'm like, why are we doing this? This is stupid. This isn't even necessary. Let's move on. That was really my thought. Till I was like, what are we? What are we doing here? This, and until you know, the bigger picture was revealed. But till you figure out the um, step you need to make it the team, everybody spins in their own circles and jumps ahead if they're a leader or, or just sits back and goes. I said, I said how we should do this and nobody listened to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to sit there and go, okay. Cause that's what introverts do. They don't care about, you know, they're just, they give their fact and nobody listens. So they'll wait till everybody keep scrambling the eggs until something bigger <laughs> happens. So Lauren to listen to you, you are like swimming in a pool of extroverts for crying out loud. Look yeah. at this, right? Just observe. I mean, I can be extroverted when I need to, but sure. Yeah. But it's not your default style. It takes energy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let me just, uh, Manor, maybe you can help answer this last question here too, right? Uh, the last question I said, right? What, so what? And the last one is now what? Now, what are you going to do different? So from this experience, does anybody going to do something different in your next team meeting if, or, or group meeting or whatever it is that you have? So uh, anybody? Yep, let's go to Manor now. So we could assign a role to each person and that person is just responsible for their role. So and suddenly... No yeah, it's suddenly they're engaged. Even even in Toastmasters, you make somebody the timekeeper or the um keeper. They count the number of ums that somebody speaks. 
you gave them a role. They have a purpose. They love that. People just want to be helpful, right? We're humans. We want to succeed. We want to feel great. I'm going to just sort of make these observations so that we can end on time here too, though, right? Like um, Minora, uh, oh no, Vicky started this whole thing, as you can tell with a rebel style. She started A and it actually prevented you from asking any questions about my rules, okay? Uh, Manjura also hit A. Uh, so you, we had to restart and there was no talking in between. This is what 80% of my groups do is they, they forget the last rule that you can talk. Now you guys actually talked, but you didn't make any plan for a while. Right. Uh, and then really you can see the observation point. Um, Megan, I want to compliment you so much and Lauren, because what happened is Lauren had the solution. You did exactly what I said. You were the introverted one and you looked at it and you're going, you're probably also a system-minded person at Tableau. It's probably why they hired you. See, look at yeah. her. Yeah. I, I don't even know Lauren, right? And, and uh, she said it, and then she got ignored. So she can just go, now she can just wait. She can either do two things. Either the groups are going to succeed, or later on she can say, I told you so. <laughs> but Megan, this is what introverts want. Megan, with her extroverted piece, came out there and said, Lauren made a suggestion. It looks really good. There's so many times I've seen in teams, especially like Microsoft and all the teams I work with, corporate teams around the world, every culture, somebody just needs to support the idea. This is why you build relationships, right? If Megan and Lauren had this really long-term relationship, right? Megan would listen to her, maybe what might appear like a crazy idea and all of a sudden listen to it and going, no, we should listen to Lauren. And that's all she needs, right? To, to continue that leadership role. So I just want to show you that as dynamics and, and now give my key lessons that go along with this. So I wanted to share my observations with that. And the observations too is why did I do this? <clears throat> it's to show you that teams who have no rhythm don't do anything. And when you have rhythm, you create magic, right? And I'm going to show you some very easy ways. Start and end each meeting the same right? And you can create rhythm with your groups. Uh, people are grasping for anything of certainty. Because let me tell you right now, there is a lot of uncertainty. I'm running a really cool poll right now that says, what day will the entire United States be open and released, quote unquote, right? And nobody knows. The, the dates range from now to 2022. And I don't know. So if you're a leader, create stability. You can start and end each meeting exactly the same. You'll find that your group will love it. Next, find a rhythm for sharing and solving information in the middle. Unlike Manura, right? Three hours and 58 minutes of one person talking is not a rhythm. That is a diatribe, right? So, and if you, that's what it's supposed to be, fine. But that's not a team thing, right? Uh, talking about teams, you want to involve everyone, engage everyone, and get the best out of them. When you guys actually work together, right, you were all involved in the solution and you created the solution. Number three is bring your culture online. Like if you have a mascot, like if you're at a college or something like that, bring that person online. Like thank you, I brought that. That's my personal culture. I brought it online and you find that people uh, love that, showing people's pets. Like we're looking into insights in people's homes now. Uh, whatever your culture is, bring it online because it's that small piece of stability in the post uh, pre-corona world and you're bringing it into the post-corona world and if you don't have culture that fits just make it just make it be the leader step up make it i got a chance to go to um zappos uh before this whole lockdown in las vegas and they are the kings of creating the most amazing culture so that's how you create rhythm now how do i keep each of you engaged well let me tell you one of my secrets i've been doing this for over 20 years debbie's been updating a participation map customized for you. There's time marks, there's the initiatives, there's my planning time, there's the actual time. I shows if I'm ahead or behind, but most importantly, it shows me. Is somebody, like Lauren, not saying anything? And do I need to call at her at some point to make sure that she's engaged, right? Or, or is somebody talking too much, Vicky? Right? <laughs> then I can actually see this on the chart and it allows me to Make sure as the facilitator, I can work around and make sure that everyone feels included. Uh, I would give Lauren a, a rule quite often. I give everyone the rule, but Lauren might be one to use it, which is, Lauren, if I ask and call on you, you have the option to say pass, which just says, I don't have anything more to add to this conversation. I, I like to, you know, I'll choose to pass so I don't take up any airtime and we can get on with it. So anyways, those are some of the rules that I have. Hi, Debbie and Stoggy. Um, so participation map. Now, right? What you got all these and now you can create results. 
right? And the results I hope that you can create are successful online meetings, the ability to get work done under the most challenging conditions of all time, that you can help and you can lead your company, right? You can be in the bottom position, especially Lauren, one of your students, right, or, or employees could probably lead right now. And if they're given that position of leadership of stabilizing the stuff online, right, you can, you, one, they're happy, and two, they're totally engaged. Number three, developing new ways to help your companies. And so now let's just see if we have retention. So I gave you the solution at the beginning of this, and it was called GRRR. So unmute your mics and tell me what the G stands for. Goals. Oh. Goals. Oh, very good, Vicky. All right. Next one is, what's the first R stand for? Rules. Vicky, you're the star student. Okay, not Vicky. Anybody <laughs> but Vicky, what's the next R stand for? Rhythm. Rhythm, Rhythm Menora, and Majula got it. All the M's are there. All right. And the last R, it stands for? Results. <laughs> I love Vicky mouth the words. <laughs> 54 minutes into this, we have 100% retention. Hey, it's Friday, everybody. I'm going to show you a result here and just tell you a story, and then we're going to close this call up. If you have to go, uh, make sure and, and say first uh, that you want to uh, close up first. I just want to give you an example of when people have goals, rules, rhythm, and creating results. And this is a local example. A lot of you here, you may have heard it. Canlis is a four-star, three-generation restaurant. Uh, over the dining table on March 6th, with, uh, in, a, in about a week, they redesigned their whole business plan. That's awesome, right? They shut down their dining room and they created this. They created a bagel shed. A drive through bagel shed in the morning, right? You get breakfast, sandwich, and coffee. At lunch, you can get a burger and a veggie meal. Come on, this is a place that used to be like $300 a plate. And at dinner... You can get a home-cooked dinner and a bottle of wine delivered to your doorstep. They had me at a bottle of wine, right? They had me at a bottle of wine. So here's the result. This is 14 days ago. Press picked it up. Canlis has a line down Highway 99. They're completely packed. They have sold out the boat bagel shed as early as 10.06 in the morning. Most importantly, they're practicing social distancing. They're getting free PR for their company. They're keeping their people employed. It's amazing. But I, here's a follow-up story. Canlis screwed up. They sent an email that had everybody, all 300 plus customers for the dinner on it and said, hey, we need you to heat your oven to 325. So what did somebody do? He replied all. This is like a disaster. Remember when Flame Wars? Yeah, like a Manjula. It's like, this is a disaster waiting to happen and he's all like given that this meal costs about 125 bucks a person i can't believe it wouldn't be delivered anything than steaming hot and it could have turned into a flame war but this guy matthew kim changed the whole thing if you are dissatisfied with your order may i suggest you donate your 125 dollar fee to feeding america a national u.s food bank within the night people started the person who replied to this says i'll oh, screw it i'll do it so he donated 125. Uh, the restaurant itself, Canlis, donated $500. And by the end of the night, in three hours, they had amassed a $10,000 donation from this mistake. This is what happens when you have leadership, when you take GER and you make great stuff happen. My name is John Chen. I'm the CEO for Geoteaming. You are now graduated from team, virtual team building. Debbie Ann is going to send us some amazing stuff right, to share because, uh, number one, you now all qualify for virtual team building two, which Debbie Ann has taken. And she can tell you, we teach over 15 of these initiatives in 90 minutes because I know you know the system so we can go fast. Next, if you got value, can you just please help others? Please share this, geoteaming.com slash virtual team building. Uh, my class is just spreading by word of mouth and it needs to have your help saying, I took this, it was valuable. And the way I'd like to close this today is uh, just to answer this very simple question, so which is, what did you get for your investment in an hour today? And again, if you have to go, you can go first. And then if everyone can stay, Majula, you still have your hand up. Would you like to go? Or would you like to wait? Oh, I have my hand up. Yeah. Here, I can lower your hand. Look, I just lowered your hand. But would you like to go? Um. I just loved it. I wasn't sure what I'm going to get, but I think I can use a lot of grrr in my meetings. <laughs> so thank you so much. Yeah. You're welcome, Angela. 
the the gur itself alone is therapeutic, right? It's it's kind of like beating your pillow, and then you can get on with the business of of helping your team. So thank you so much. Who'd like to go next? Let's go to uh, Menora. So I'm in the process of building a team. I am in direct sales, and I am I have a tiny little team, but this was very valuable because I can implement it right from the start, and uh, have good communication and. Yeah, everything else too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Manura. And I've been on many calls with Manura. I understand a little bit about our business too. Sometimes the team is not your direct team. Sometimes the team is your customers. That too. Absolutely. So, so remember who would around. Sometimes it's your family. I run a call like this every Sunday night at four o'clock and my dad finally got on. He doesn't want to come to anything, right? And he finally got on and we spent Easter together and we listened to Bocelli sing Amazing Grace and we all cried. It was so amazing. That's what you can do. My family feels connected. They don't feel disconnected. They do not feel lost. And I'm the youngest child. All right, there we go. Who would like to go next? Let's go to Kim. Uh, so for my, my twice a week meeting with developers, which are introverts plus, I might, to get them to, as you said, like, I, I can't have them count ums, that's, they would get that, but I maybe have them start with a good thing they did this week and a goal they have this week, like make sure everybody has to say that, like something they accomplished at the beginning of the meeting, at the end of what they intend to focus on before the next meeting or the end of the week, to try to get some more engagement. Perfect, thank you, Kim. In, in virtual team building too, you saw it takes us about 10 or 12 minutes for us to check in like this, and it's like nine, eight or nine people. In virtual team building uh, two, we race to see how fast we can check in. We still do something personal, something valuable, and teams have been able to finish it in one minute and 22 seconds, right? So you can still check in, right? But you can, as you get used to the system, you can do it faster so you can spend more time on what you really want to do, which is the work. Uh, let's go to Vicki. I saw your hand up. Um, yeah, at Ashley, John, when I first got your um, email, having known you for a while, I was totally enthusiastic and uh, forwarded it up to my manager as well as the uh, director of uh, the division of recreation and disappointed that you haven't heard back from them. So I'm going to be reaching up to them again, but understand that um, our whole mission as far as the department has changed and um, they're kind of busy, but um, I'm going to push it up again. And, and uh, because we've got some, um, staff development training that um, I think you'd make an awesome keynote and uh, I'm going to uh, push it up. So thank you. Thank you so much. Vicki and I actually collaborated on a high-tech scavenger hunt at her past uh, work, which was at the Green Lake Center, which is the most beautiful center in Seattle. It's a place Bill Clinton used to come and run, right? When he, when he come to visit Seattle. And uh, you know, the coronavirus gives us some gifts, right? I actually got called by my publisher I am now, uh, I signed a contract last Friday to write my second book. That's amazing. Great. And so Vicki, I mean, I'm about the people. I would love the Parks and Rec's ability to get this system to other people because I know there's so many people suffering, literally suffering out there because they may not have these tools or they may not know how to use them correctly. So right. uh, I, I look know, forward I to that. Unfortunately, yeah. one of our challenges is we just heard from, um, city IT that we cannot use Zoom yep. for yep. Um, our platform. You're on the same, I just talked, I mean, my last call was on a school and they, they can't do it and some medical places can't do it, but some can, right? Some, because I do know another firm, a, a psychologist firm that is using it. Um, so, so there's a way. It doesn't have to be this, by the way, too, right? This is just, but 200 million and um, four years ago, I picked this platform because it was the best performing after they tested 18 of them. So that's why I'm here. And that's why 200 million people are here too. Who'd like to go next? Let's go to Lauren. Um, I've done the daily goal, like a goal setting for my team, but I, I think pushing it to like a weekly goal and updating daily on progress is a great idea. Also, um, making bets on when the company state and US is opening, I feel like would be a good little side, side bet, side fun thing to keep people engaged. So, yeah, if you don't know Tableau, they're one of the best data visualization engines on the planet. And, um, you know, Lauren, I said I'm going to scatter plot this stuff because I'm going to look for trends, right? Where are all the dates, you know, collected about? And, uh, it's, and, and the, the key you have to do too is what date did they guess on? Because the, 
it's moving. I believe is a, I highly believe from what I see is right now is some leadership is they're just pushing 30 days at a time. And I think they're going to have to push a long time for 30 days at a time when it would be better if you just said for planning, right? Well, Lauren, you and I are planners, right? Just tell me it's nine months. It's fine. I don't like the answer, but I'll plan better than if you tell me 30, then 30, then 30. I had a swim teacher that used to do that. He used to stand in the pool and I used to swim towards him and then he would walk backwards right? Making the goal farther and farther. And I'm like, no, I'm supposed to be done by now, but you keep walking backward. This sucks, right? <laughs> so anyways, thank you so much. And I do believe uh, Tableau does have some programs to help you process data. If you are a data person, uh, you should check out the website, Tableau. Uh, who else would like to go? Let's go to Megan. There we go. Um, this was really helpful in just remembering that we're all at home and we have distractions and there is there are methods to keep people engaged. And like, I know it hasn't happened surprisingly, but like usually I have my dog alarm going off in the background because we have a big sliding glass door and he's obsessed with protecting us from squirrels. Um, and so a lot of the time I'm the one on the meeting that has to like mute and unmute and mute because even if I get him to stop barking, as soon as the squirrel moves again, all bets are off. And he is not a small dog. So making sure that there is a way to, to handle that and to still be engaged in everything, that there are different ways, even if it's being able to focus on a task that gives somebody something to do. So that was super helpful. Thank you. Uh. And yeah, Vicky's the one who was like, you need to take this this is really good and worth your time. And I'm really happy I listened. So thank you to Vicki. Thank you so much, Megan. I'll give you the super bonus tip. You're going to get a cheat sheet for Zoom. And I think there are some other similar sheets right now. Watch. Uh, if everyone is muted here, I'm going to show you. Watch. If you're muted, uh, Megan, press your space bar and then say something. Um, this generally works unless there's a presentation happening or your cursor is in the chat That's box. Right. And then you hit space bar and nothing happens. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, the space bar is that you got to keep it uh, the window in focus, but sometimes it's really nice to have the space bar. Uh, it's like a push to talk system. So it's very much like a walkie talkie. It can really help if you have a lot of background. Megan, I'm going to give you another link too. Um, it's not, Debbie doesn't have it yet, um, but I'm going to send it an email. There's a sound cancellation called CRISP, K-R-I-S-P. You download it for a PC and it becomes noise cancellation. I've had, my neighbor has a, a Porsche and a, a, a Harley and uh, that thing can drive by and nobody can hear it. It's pretty impressive. Okay, did uh, anybody else, who's gonna go? Did I get Monero? Yes, okay. Well, Debbie Ann, you get next to last I just, word. I just noticed, uh, thank you very much, Megan. When you do hit the space bar, you're a little mute uh, goes away and then you know it's working. So thank you so much. Well, cool. Well, I'm just give this last word. Thank you for being here. Let me just tell you, this is my bright spot in my life right now. Uh, I get a chance to show that this works. I get a chance. I've talked to people from Slova Slovenia and Hungary and Georgia, the country and Ireland. And most of all, I just want to hear great stories about each of you. Uh, Debbie Ann also put in the chat room, there is a link to a Facebook group called Virtual Team Building, right? And uh, you can join that, ask to join that today. I do moderate that group. And it has full of graduates like you who are creating solutions to stuff every day. So that can be a valuable resource for you. Most of all, I just want to say thank you. I appreciate you. I'm going to stay here for another 23 minutes for anybody who has questions. But if you need to go, now is the best time to go. And Debbie Ann and I from New York and from Seattle, we say thank you and goodbye. Stay safe and stay healthy. We'll see you next time.